Welcome back to Locked On Sports Atlanta. It's ATL Hangout Day here on this Friday, our first edition of this. Hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm Mark Zeno of A to Z, alongside ATL Day One's Jarvis Davis and Tanisha Batiste and hitting hard with John Chuckery. All of us here for the first time. We'll do these every so often here. We get all the shows on Locked On Sports Atlanta together for a little ATL Hangout. We hope you guys are uh, enjoying it and appreciate you guys being part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. Over 2,000 subscribers on YouTube now. We are growing fast. And a huge thanks to all you fans out there who are making Locked On Sports Atlanta part of your everyday listen here uh, for some of the best content when it comes to Atlanta sports. This segment brought to you by our friends at BlueNile.com. And this segment is all about the Atlanta Braves because – somebody's playing like a superstar and somebody ain't. Michael Harris continues to be on fire. A huge home run last night. A great throw from center field to nail a runner at the plate. And it was an impressive showing for a young man who's got about a month and a half more major league experience than all of us uh, do for that standpoint. On the flip side, Ronald Acuna, who came back off the IL, started out hot. He's been bitterly cold ever since. These are not Ronald Acuna type numbers, but uh, we'll get to Acuna in a moment, folks. Let's guys, let's start first with Michael Harris. Jarvis, I mean, it's hard to understate what he's meant to this team so far this year. He came up right at the right time, right before that 14 game winning streak. Uh, but is this kid as special as he looks through the first month and a half? Oh man. <laughs> Hey, hell yeah. Let me go ahead and say that. <laughs> Let me go ahead and answer it like that. But yeah, when you look think about what he did last night, it was just I think it was just something that you have to really take a look at and how and think how the Braves are going to structure how they move forward and try to get this NL East division, right? Because we, I know you talked about on your show about how good pitching beats, beats good hitting each and every day, every time, right? And I think that i add to that for the Braves. Good pitching and defense, yeah, I think it's going to be the, the caveat to carry the Braves into this uh, and try to catch the New York Mets because when you – Look at the post game last night as far as a Kyle Wright, and they were talking to him about what it was, you know, that kind of got into him. And he was talking about how that throw was what motivated him. You know, he's like, yeah, the home runs are cool. That's all good. But what motivated him was that throw because he saved the run. And then if you look right after that, that, that throw, I think uh, Kyle Wright retired the next seven batters. And he was just moving at a pace where he was just kind of working quickly. I was like, oh, my God, this dude is going at an amazing pace. They even mm -hmm. talked about it on the broadcast on Valley Sports. And it was just for a guy to have an effect like that on the game. Like, we know how guys at the plate, the home runs and all that good stuff. But the guy to be able to affect the game defensively and at the plate, man, Michael Harris is all what we have expected and even more. John? That's crazy to think about what uh, what little experience both Strider and Harris have in professional baseball. Strider was just drafted a couple of years ago. He's a 2020 draft pick. He had 94 innings in minor league ball last year. Harris didn't even play AAA. The, the thing you love about Michael Harris, he plays like he doesn't know what he doesn't know. And, and he just goes out there. He steals yeah. bases. He makes every throw. He runs down every ball in the gap. He hits for power. He does everything you could ask him to do. Just goes out there and plays every night. And what's the old saying? Defense and speed travels. That's what he gives you every night. You know, all of his hitting is a bonus. I mean, the idea that he's doing Man. this at the plate is unbelievable. You knew he's going to be an elite defensive center fielder. You knew he could go out and steal bases. The hitting and the power and everything is just a bonus out of all of it. But to have two guys on a World Series championship team from the year before that have come in and made this kind of impact as rookies is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't usually happen when you run everybody back by and large. And it's interesting because there's a question, John, that you posed, and I, I'll just save it because Mark may be going to that next. But that was my thought as well. Like if you talk about two impactful players, that's my thought. It's it's Michael Harris the second, and it's Spencer Strider. And I, I thought about this because you guys kind of went in the direction that I was going to talk about with what Kyle Wright said, as well as you know what you just said, Chuck Ray. For me, it's looking at Michael Harris. First of all, thanks, Snit, for putting him back in the ninth position, right? The nine hole works. The eight hole, you lost when you put him there. So keep him in the nine. We'll keep it moving. But there's, it's to me, you also look at the fact that if you go back to May 28th or before May 28th, we know what this team was, right? On May 28th, you call Michael Harris up from double A. On May 30th, you transition Spencer Strider into the starting rotation. On June 30th, you're 21 and six. To me, that's all you need to know about the impact of both of these players on this squad. 
No, it's it's been incredible to watch them both. And with Michael Harris' continued success, uh, you look at the big picture and going out and trying to win another World Series. Now, you did it last year without the services of Ronald Acuna, but you also had Freddie Freeman in the lineup. Uh, I don't know how much longer this team can continue to play at the clip that they are, and it's almost thankful that the All-Star break is coming, right? Because maybe just Acuna needs, even though he's playing in the game, maybe he just needs a couple of stress-free days where he doesn't have to do anything and think about important baseball. But um, it, I don't know, guys. At what point do you start to get concerned? If you're Brian Snitker, at what point do you have to evaluate, can I continue to leave a guy who's slumping this badly at the top of my lineup? I know it's Ronald Acuna, and the idea of moving him out of that lineup, that, that top of that lineup teacher, is sacrilegious. But at some point in time, Snicker is going to have to make a decision if Acuna can't turn things around. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. And the, the thing I like about Brian Snicker, I know sometimes we kind of bash him for this, like, because he makes us scratch our head in terms of him kind of moving parts around. But when when he's good at it, he's very, very good. So if he wants to take an opportunity to evaluate him, I wouldn't say right now, you know, Mark, I think you also, like you said, you wait until after the all-star break maybe you give him a couple games and kind of see how he comes back from there and then at that point you make the determination of what it is that you're going to do with him if to your point he hasn't maybe rested and you know what i'm thinking as well mark that it may be something to where it's not just resting the body but the mind because i believe a lot of it could be as well that mental on whether or not you know my body is truly at 100 percent and i'm ready to rock and roll and then of course you know what you get from him in you know right field so you want to be mindful of what you're still for the most part we know he had a little flub uh, a couple games ago but for the most part i think he's doing fine defensively but yes and it's going to have to potentially make a decision if he comes back on the other side of all-star and on the other side of that derby and we're still seeing the lack of productivity at the plate that we've seen so far all right, more decisions to come. First, a word, our friends from BlueNile.com. You know, at Blue Nile, you can celebrate all of life's special moments from creating that custom engagement ring of her dreams to gifting a classic timeless jewelry piece, all the prices you won't find at a traditional jeweler. You know, if you're ready to pop that question, if you're, if you're deciding of making that leap, Blue Nile has sample online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft the perfect engagement ring for her each ring is one of a kind. But if you're on the other end of the spectrum, where you're just looking for that special piece of jewelry, that fine jewelry, a way to say I love you, a way to say thank you, you can have everything at your disposal at Blue Nile because they have jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift for every single budget out there. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. Locked on sports listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. The podcast exclusive engagement, this podcast, I'm sorry, rather, includes engagement rings. It's an exclusive here on the podcast. Use the code Locked On. That's code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. All right, so Jarvis, I'll ask you, does Alex Anthopoulos need to be as aggressive at this trade deadline as he was last year? Um, You know what? I don't think so because there are only a few tweaks they probably could have made. Like you mentioned before, you talked about, you know, starting pitcher or maybe even somebody there in, in, in the bullpen, but they got Yates coming. You know, they, they seem to be pretty excited about and you know, satisfied with what they seeing in him is from a rehab situation. So I think that – he doesn't necessarily have to be as aggressive as he was, but, you know, I'm sure that, you know, Alex Anthopoulos is always, always, always looking for the right deal. That's why I believe he's one of the best general managers in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, I mean, he already found Cano, so, and that seems yeah. to have paid off early, Teacher. Your thoughts? And I was thinking the same thing. When you look at what Robinson Cano has do done just to at least stabilize things until he gets Ozzy Albies back, maybe in that August time frame, I don't think he has to be as aggressive, but I do agree with you. When I was thinking about Charlie Morton's last start, and you know now he's five and four, and he, he was looking like old Charlie for a couple of games there, and then he just kind of came back down to earth. I'm like, yeah, that's probably where you need to be because – the rotation is just not set, right? So we really don't have five people in the Braves rotation that are reliable because Ian Anderson, he had a, we'll call it a solid outing the last go round, but ultimately speaking, it wasn't a great outing against the Nats just uh, last Sunday. And so you look at that coupled with the fact that maybe kind of coming out of All-Star Week and getting to a later trade deadline, which I think is around August 2nd, they've got, I don't want to call it a soft schedule, Mark, but soft enough. 
And back to your point about Ronald Acuna Jr. as well, that may give him an opportunity to catch himself up just because they'll play teams like, I don't know, the Phillies, the D-backs, and the Phillies again before they even see the Mets. I think that'll give Anthopoulos an opportunity to really see where this team is, to see if he needs to either just go after another pitcher to potentially shore up that starting rotation, or if he sees that there are still some holes that need to be filled um, on the team, on the roster. Pop quiz real quick for the both of you. Jarvis, you go first. If I asked you the playoffs started tomorrow, who's starting games one, two, and three in any order for you on this brave staff, who would you pick? Ooh, I'm going Max Free, Kyle Wright, and – this may sound crazy. I'm going. No, Spencer it's Spencer Strider. Strider. That's the yeah. answer. No question. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah, that's not I'm, crazy. I'm I'm gotta go with the young pup, man. Like, what about Ian Anderson? He's great in the great playoffs. He stinks right now. He, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Started tomorrow. Yeah. I am starting Max Fried in Game One, Spencer Strider in Game Two, and Kyle Wright in Game Three. Yeah, that's and I'm good with that more. order too. I'm absolutely good with that order. And sometimes it's a chess, you know, it's a chess game, right, Mark? Just depending mm -hmm. on what team they play as well and who they need, what you know, who they need on the mound or on the hill to be able to re really have an effective outing. So, yeah, in whatever order two and three go, and that's fine, as long as we keep Max Fried in the first spot, we're all good. Keep the Mustache, Mustaches only, beards need not apply. All right, <laughs> coming up next, uh, the Atlanta Falcons have a monumental task in front of them, not only for the team, but on the defensive side of the ball. But they may have something in their back pocket that will make things different this year. That's next right here on ATL Hangout on Sports uh, – uh, <laughs> What are we doing again here? On Lockdown Sports Atlanta. <laughs> <I know, right? laughs> ATL Hangout on Lockdown Sports Atlanta. We'll be right back. <laughs>